I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I've shown you a little bit and we've talked about my pianos. I've had a little bit of a chat in the past about my recorders. That's just a little new hobby edition. But I've not really discussed much about my flute. And I wanted to just tell you about my Trevor James flute because I absolutely love it. However, we've had a little bit of a love-hate relationship and I'm just getting back to really falling in love with it again. I played flute from when I was about 12 and just did the typical school orchestra thing. In fact, I will tell you a funny story. It's, it's, in, um, it's in my book, Letters from the Broom Cupboard, actually. I joined the school orchestra and this is back in the heady days of when school orchestra was perhaps pretty large. You know, we even had that rare thing of a bassoonist in our school orchestra. I have to say the school that I went to still does have a really fab jazz band. The, the quality of music there is still super great, although it's much smaller in in size perhaps. So we, we did have a massive orchestra and we used to go away on orchestral weekends all the time. And I do remember with great fondness being part of that scene. I think the school orchestra is where I first started to really find my feet in my teenage years, really. I took a long time to find myself and that was a big step along the way. And I do remember finally making it to first flute, which was, you know, a great thing for me. Real progress, you know, I'd made it. And um, I was sitting on the edge of the stage and with, down by the side with the timps and we were playing uh, the surprise symphony. And so the timps pay quite an important part in that, don't they, for the surprise. And um, the lights were just coming up to start the performance. The conductor, she was just walking to the front of the stage and I was just whispering to my friend and I said, can you, have you got enough room? It's a bit of a squish. Can you? She says, no, I'm dead squished. I, ca I can't, I can't move. I said, hang on a minute. And I shuffled my chair to the right a little bit and shuffled right off the stage, still clinging to the chair backwards into the timps, into the arms of the timp player. <laughs> and it was just chaos. Oh, dearie me and it's pride before a fall that's what they say isn't it and I just managed to clamber back onto the stage and somehow miraculously in amongst the the, the applause of the audience the lights going up and the just the general melee of the show starting somehow I don't know how just by the grace of God I got away with it and I managed to sort of gather my calm ready for the first bars. I, th I think the music fluttered around the orchestra a little bit and that had to come back to us by degrees, but we got what we needed for those opening bars and it came back to us in time. So, I um, don't know why I just told you that, but never mind. We're talking about all things flute. I, I don't think I practised assiduously. I kind of did the bare minimum. And I, I don't think I had a real love for it. And I certainly didn't know anything about the canon of music that was available for flute. It's you know, the beauty of its own right in, as an instrument. And so, you know, I just sort of scratched the surface of what was available in music for that, really. And I had a Yamaha student flute at that time, which did, did me fine for many, many years. I even did my, I think I did my grade eight on that. Because um, they always say oh, you should have this solid silver, this, that and the other. But, you know, I just couldn't. I couldn't afford it. And it, it was many, many years until I got kind of my forever piano. Only recently have I got that. I have this thing, and I'm not sure it's a healthy attitude, where I think, you know the saying, a bad workman blames his tools. And I always feel that, you know, you should be good and make the best of what you've got, even if it's not really what you, you could do with having. Because, you know, life's not perfect, and we can't just buy the best of everything whenever and so I think you need to make good and I think it's a reaction against where perhaps I see where people buy the best the best the best and just throw money around and then don't use it and I don't want to be guilty of that I always feel I want to earn 
what I have. I think you can have another way where perhaps if you buy something, if you can, and then you are wanting to prove worthy and to justify that purchase, I guess you can do it that way. But, you know, if finances don't allow, well, you just can't do that, can you? And so I had a student quality flute for for most of my um, education in flute. And then I, I did a thing where my daughter was doing her grade eight. And I said, oh, do you know what? I'll do mine again with you. So we did it together. <laughs> it seemed like a good idea at the time. And so again, I was still on this student quality flute. And then just before we were going to both take the exam, something seized and keys sort of stopped working and so on. So I, I nipped over to our local amazing friendly woodwind repairer who actually does woodwind repairs for all over the country. It's just we are fortunate to have Dominic on our, on our doorstep. And I went to Dominic and said, like, you've got to help me. I've got an exam again. And I mean, I guess it didn't matter because I'd already got the grade eight. But, you know, I was doing it with my daughter. So I need this flute can you help me? And he says, well, I can't get it done until, because, you know, little old me, I'll have to wait my turn. He's got sort of philharmonic flautists waiting for their repairs and things. So I'm kind of bottom of the list and so I should be. And, and he got this Trevor James open hold flute in his cabinet. And I've wanted to have a go of Trevor James for a while because if I have to admit... I'm not a great fan of Yamahas and I can't quite pinpoint why. Maybe it's because they do a little bit of everything so they never perhaps consider perfect for one thing. You know, like Kawai just make pianos and so they are amazing pianos. Yamaha is very, very good, but I just, I, I don't, can't say that I love it. It seems I have a sort of a, a business relationship with it. I don't absolutely love it. And he said, I've got this Trevor James open hold flute. Do you want to have a go of that? You can borrow it. And I thought, well, do you know, I've always wanted to have a go at a Trevor James and I've always wanted to have a go at an open hold flute. Can I just borrow it for a little bit whilst you're dealing with my old flute? And my old flute, the Yamaha, was named Jorvik. So Jorvik was poorly. I'll have a go of this Trevor James. And I took it home because I, I, I was too shy to try it in the workshop. And I bought it home and I had a go and I just absolutely fell in love with it. I don't know why. It could even be things like superficial things like I love the fact that the head joint has got some nice pretty engraving. And I loved the fact that the open hole nature of it meant that I really connected with the instrument and I could feel the air vibrations actually in my fingers absolutely and you know there's a big thing about open hole flutes isn't there because it's perhaps seen as kind of the the, the posh full flautist version and that's not true it doesn't mean you're a better flautist to have that and it can even be down to the fact that if your fingers are just the wrong size you can't do it it's a biological thing as well and my friend she is an amazing flautist she's got um, a solid silver Miyazawa and she's also got the extended B flat joint at the bottom and she is an amazing flautist but she can't do open holes because her fingers just aren't the right size, aren't the right shape. But this just seemed to fit me hand in glove and I absolutely loved it. And so I made the change and I just kind of said to the woodwind repairer and I said, can I just do you a swap and pay the extra? And so it's got the solid silver head joint, but just the silver plated body. So, you know, there is an improvement in tone if my practice allows me to make the best use of that. And I know that really you can go right to the whole hog and have a solid silver everything. And I know because, you know, my daughter is primarily flute and she saved up and saved up and saved up. And we all kind of pitched in so that she got this uh, solid silver Miyazawa. And I remember we saved up for so long for her with it. And then metal prices went up and the price of the flute just increased massively. And it's like, oh gosh, you know, we're still not there. 
And and I know that some of my pupils, you know, they've got solid silver flute because perhaps they can just go out and buy it and that's fine. And I never felt that I could do that. And I'm not a concert flautist and it's my second instrument. So I just feel like I've, I've kind of found my place because the head joint is the important bit where you get your tone. You can't even just have a, a silver lip plate or you could you could even have a gold lip plate and, and then bits and bobs of the rest. I absolutely love this flute and I'm beginning to really rediscover my joy for it again. So this is my Trevor James flute. His name is Trevalier. Don't ask me why. Do you know the one thing that I don't like about this flute though is, and I'll show you, excuse me, it's the case. I think it's just an ugly case and I keep meaning to try and find out if there's a funky case that I can have and the years just keep slipping by and I just keep managing but I think it's a really ugly case I guess that doesn't matter and I'm now beginning to really just find the love for this again and I'm really delving into the flute repertoire I absolutely love baroque flute and I absolutely love modern French flute music as well. And so I'm finding that I'm just rediscovering the joy. And it's so great. Maybe um, fiddling around with the recorder in my little fiddlers group has sort of opened the door to me to start to find the joy for this again. And I'm really enjoying just rediscovering the beauty of music again just for myself so this is Trevalier and hopefully he and I are going to become best friends again and it's about time it's been too long I've left him abandoned for too long and so I'm going to give him lots of care and attention so meet Trevalier thanks for joining me take care see you next time bye mm -hmm.